Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 1. Today is the very, very last Sunday in our month of purpose and vision. And we shall be trusting God to round off some things, even as we also look forward to having a great time um, in the other services of the month. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, he said, I will stand upon my watch, I will set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end he shall speak and not lie. Do it, tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. The subject this morning is pursuing purpose and vision. Pursuing purpose and vision. Our objective is understanding what it takes to pursue vision and purpose unto actualization. Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run that read at it. The scriptures make it clear that vision must be pursued in order for it to be fulfilled. Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run that read at it. What, why is it important to pursue? Number one, to pursue is to pressurize. Unto fulfillment or realization. To pursue is to pressurize. pressure on fulfillment. Secondly, what is not pursued cannot be possessed. It cannot be possessed. For anything to be possessed, it must be pursued. Thirdly, what is not pursued may not be possible. What is not pursued may not be possible. So if it is to be possible, it must be pursued. What then is the pursuit process? What process do we follow to pursue? Number one, write the vision. Write the vision. Put the vision on paper. That is, you have discovered the plan of God for your life, the purpose of God for your life, what you, what you believe God wants you to do with your life, put it on paper. Why? Three things. First, vision 
receives vitality when it is documented. It receives vitality. The life of vision is in its documentation. The power for it to be fulfilled, the power for it to live is in its, is in its documentation. It was Martin Luther who said the faintest ink is more powerful than the most powerful memory. That is, it doesn't matter how powerful your memory is. If what you call vision is only in your mind, it lacks the life to live. It lacks the life. Secondly, vision or purpose can only is only reviewable and pursuable when documented. It can only be reviewed and only be pursued if it had been written. You don't you you, you don't know you don't know whether uh, you, you are you are on, on the correct path if it is just in the mind. It is only reviewable and it is only pursuable when it has been documented. Thirdly, vision can only gain motion with documentation. It can only gain motion that he may run that read it. First, it must be written. It must be written. If there must be a running. It gains motion. When purpose or vision is in the mind of a person, it is either wishful thinking or positive desire. It has no future. It is only when it is written down that it becomes vision. And it gains motion. There are many of us seated here today. Many things crossed your mind in time past. You had no time to write it down. And as they, and as they, and as they, as they, as soon as they came, and you had no time to write it down, so soon they disappeared. Somebody said that the best time to strike the iron is when it is hot. The best time to document a vision, an idea, is when it is hot in the mind. Somebody else says, vision is like a crying baby in a, in a service that must be carried out immediately. <laughs> must be carried out when? You don't, you don't, you don't pamper the baby. You don't carry, carry out. Somebody say, Amen. I am sure there are people here today that many, many good ideas and many, many things that, that gushes of inspiration that flashed. For me, a paper, a book is always in my possession. Permanent. There are times I will run out of the bathroom to come and write something down and return back. Because it must not escape. It must not be allowed to disappear. So, what is the process for the pursuit of vision? Write the vision. Number two, review the vision. Review. That is the word, read it, read it. That he may run, that read it. The process of read, the reading or the read it thing. That is the review. Review the vision. You wrote it down. Review means view and view again. You look at it and look at it again. The 
this is the purpose of God for my life. This is where I'm, this is where I believe I am heading for, and I'm looking at it again. What is the review? What does the review do? Number one, reviewing the vision causes a deepening of understanding, a deepening of the understanding of the vision. It causes a deepening of the understanding of the vision. You know that understanding is in levels and understanding is in phases. Right? Cell biology in form 3 or JS3 is different from SS3 is different from um, One, 100 level medicine and it's different from molecular genetics class. It's in levels. Reviewing causes a deepening. I've been in ministry for a while but every time I look at what God has sent me to do, a deeper understanding, a deeper dimension comes alive. It causes a deepening. It causes a deepening. A deepening. Secondly, reviewing the vision causes a refueling of passion. A refueling or a refiring of passion for realization. Every time you review vision and you review vision, it, it refires your passion, refuels your passion. There is something, it's like pouring fuel on something. That is what causes the running. Because passion is refueled. Thirdly, reviewing the vision facilitates action. Action on the vision. When you review the vision, facilitates your action on the vision. There are those who look at what they claim God sent them to do or what they have to do with their lives maybe once in a year or once in two years. So it causes a retardation in action. Somebody say amen. What, how do you pursue the vision? Now these are the basic two I'm going to deal with exhaustively in this service. I'll mention the others. That will take in the next services. Number three, plan the vision. Plan it. Write the vision. Make it plain. The, making it plain is part of planning it. Make it plain. Planning the vision has to do with detailing the vision. Make it plain. Make it plain. It is possible to have a good vision and have a terrible plan. And the vision may fail, not because the vision was wrong, but because the plan was, out, was not in place. There are so many people who never became anything God wanted them to become. Not because they lacked a vision, but because they lacked a plan, a workable plan, an actionable plan. Plan the vision. Work it out. Let me say this. Vision is fixed, but plan is flexible. A vision tells you where you are going. A plan tells you how to get there. The vision is a constant. The plan is a variable. So you can change plans. You don't change vision, but you change plans. So you plan it. So, so, so there is room for flexibility and there is room for variability. 
I tried it this way. It couldn't work, all right? Father, how do I do it? The vision of Elijah was, Elisha was to raise the child of the Shunammite woman. And he gave his rod to El Gehazi to go and wake the child. And when the rod could not wake the child, he did not change the vision. He changed the plan. And he went directly and laid on the child and he came back to life. There are those who change vision because it couldn't work out. Most times it is not the vision that is to be changed. It is the plan that is changeable. We'll look at that later. So plan the vision. Number four, pursue the vision. Now this is a, the center of what we are dealing with today. Pursue the vision. Chase the vision. Pursuit has to do with taking steps and making moves regarding the vision. I heard from God's servant, Papa Yereko, who said, until steps are taken, positions are not changed. Taking steps, making moves. There are people who say God called them 50, 50, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So when, so what's happening? Well, I'm just trusting God. I'm just trusting God. Pursue the vision. Every vision requires a fighter spirit for actualization. A fighter spirit. A fighting spirit. You must be fightful. That is the spirit of pursuit. You must be fightful. Because there are forces that are contending and resisting the actualization of that vision. How many of you know that a devil does not want you to become what God wants you to become? The devil is the eternal plan of the plan, is the eternal enemy of the plan of God. The forces of darkness don't want you to become what God wants you to become. Ancestral forces don't want you to become what God wants you to become. That is why the fighter spirit that culminates in pursuit is necessary. Pursue the vision unto a tangible conclusion. We'll deal with those two points in detail in the next service. Number five, be patient with the vision. Is it contradictory? No. Be patient with the vision. That is in the, in the course of pursuing the vision. If there appears to be some delay, don't give up. He said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it will speak. The beginning of most visions appear very quiet. They speak at the end. That is, when you, 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 you are on the path of doing what you feel God wants you to do, at the beginning, it will appear as if you are wasting your time. At the beginning, most times, visions speak not at the beginning. They speak at the end. In the eyes of the world and in the eye of your own self, at times it appears like you are wasting your time. But at the end, the Bible said, it shall speak. That's what, that's what, that is what necessitates the patience with the vision. Somebody say a loud amen. This place where we are, I saw the revelation of it about 12, 10 to 12 years, yet we couldn't locate the place. We couldn't locate the place until we went towards Nasarawa State area. To look for big lands in 700 acres and almost a thousand acres somewhere else. And as we are thinking of going towards that site for what you might call the permanent site of our ministry, the Lord.
Lord pulled me back and said, remember the place I showed you. Remember the place I showed you. And that was on the airport road. And he showed me the place with a mark. What you might call a landmark. That this property is, is on this side. And when you see this, you know it is here. And I, I called the property agent. And he's in church now, I believe. And I anointed him with oil and said, this is your work. Go and look for big land that can accommodate so and so on so and so place on the airport road. And he came within one week. And he said, I have seen it. I have seen over 500 hectares at the place that you mentioned. And they are ready to sell as much as we are ready to buy. Wow. All right, let's go. That is, you got a revelation or a vision almost 10, almost 12 years before you saw its actualization. It's for an appointed time. Even though it is tarrying, wait. There are people who have hurried God into a different assignment. They have gone ahead of God and done something that God had no hand in. There are those who waited until they decided to give themselves a husband. Until they decided to find themselves whatever they can find. You will never miss it. Say it louder, amen. Say it louder, amen. And the, the, the most important, the, 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 the frightening thing is that when you miss the vision, you miss the provision. If you are doing a construction where God has not commanded, you will never see the supplies that will finish it. That's why you see some people doing some projects almost eternally. You must be at the place of the vision to see, to see, to have the guarantee of the provision. So there is some level of patience with the vision. In case results are slow in coming. But you are sure this is what God said. You push on. Finally, exercise faith for the fulfillment of the vision. That was why he said, the just shall live by his faith. After he talked about the vision, it's for an appointed time. He said, now, behold, the, his soul, which is lifted up, is not operating, but the just shall live by faith. Whatever takes God, takes faith. Whatever, whatever involves God, involves faith. It is faith that moves God to confirm his word. It is not possible for God to be at work where faith is not in place. It's not possible. Lord, this is what you say I am to, you want to do with my life. This is where you are taking me in life. Then no devil can stop it. Faith that is expressible at the place of prayer. Faith that is expressible at the place of declaration. There are many people, it is not that the vision is wrong, it is that faith is not available. And the bankruptcy of faith is the mortality of the vision. Somebody say amen. So, you want the vision to come to pass, you want to pursue the vision, write the vision, review the vision, plan the vision, pursue the vision. Be patient with the vision. Exercise faith for the fulfillment of the vision. There is something I will, I will add before I conclude. Please note that every vision is for an appointed time. There are things God may say today whose fulfillment is in 10 years time. 
There are things God may say today whose fulfillment is tomorrow. There are things God may say today whose fulfillment is in 17 years time. It is important to be sensitive to receiving vision. It's also important to be sensitive to timing. For he makes all things beautiful, not in your time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. He makes all things beautiful in his time. In his time. You see? When you look at it, at times we used to read it like he makes all things beautiful in its time. In the time of that thing. Not necessarily. In his time. His own time. On your clock he may be late. But on his time he is on time. Am I communicating? The vision for the building of Faith Tabernacle came to God's servant Bishop on the 10th of April 1982. And that place became a reality in 1999. 17 nitty years. The load that a 12-year-old child can carry, if you put it on the head of a 2-year-old, you can break his neck. There is something God may want you to carry that is not for now. If this construction was dead, if we did this construction now, this particular construction, if we did it when we were 3 years or 2 years old as a church, you may bury everybody. Including the pastor and everybody. Everybody just died in the course of the construction. He said, what happened? He said, the man couldn't wake up in the morning. He was thinking too much about the cost. <laughs> and the engineer ran away. And somebody ran, somebody else ran mad. Do you understand? Because everybody was trying to achieve something whose time has not come at all. <laughs> Am I coming? But we, you, you are in a construction where millions were flowing like water. Uh, one, one, one chief engineer came here, one of the most um, uh, renowned engineers. He, said, he told us, he said, I don't think you are spending less than 300 million every month. Every week here. When he saw the, when he saw the rate at which something said, I estimate between 150 to 300 million weekly. You should be spending it here every week. That was what he said. That was, as he's an expert. He's, he's one of the, I mean, MDs of one of the top construction companies in the country. And from his experience, that is what he should be spending. I don't think we saw such an amount in how many years of ministry. So we can come and talk about starting to build at that time. Say, what is it? Say, I saw if 75 or 100,000 sit out auditorium that God is going to help us to build and we want to build. And I say, when? Now? When? Now? Some people will leave church first. <laughs> so when you will finish building, I will come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So please don't ever forget that there is a, that as we trust God to know what he wants us to do, we must also be sensitive to the timings of them. So that you don't, you don't, you don't do the right thing at the wrong time and experience a collapse. When you, when you attempt grape that is not ripe, it is destructive. Please take your seat. Having said that as a point of caution, conclusion is twofold. One, it is not enough to possess vision. It is important to pursue vision. It's not enough to possess vision. It is important to possess, to pursue vision and then second conclusion is purpose and vision don't get fulfilled in a day faith and persistence are required purpose and vision don't get fulfilled in a day faith and persistence are required in their fulfillment. 
Habakkuk chapter 6 verse 2. He said that you be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. First, it is not enough to possess purpose or vision. It is important to pursue it. Second, purpose and vision don't get fulfilled in a day. Faith and persistence are required for their fulfillment. It's a new day for somebody. For anyone here today who is out of touch with what God wants you to do with your life. I prophesy connection to insight, connection to light, connection to revelation. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. And for everyone who is confused about certain timings, I prophesy clarity. Stand up on your feet in the loud shout of praise. Hallelujah. Somebody got something, say amen. Somebody got something, say louder, amen. This year, that plan of God for your life, no devil shall stop it. I said no devil shall stop it. No power of hell shall stop it. Help from above is coming your way. In Jesus' precious name. Lift up your hands and let's appreciate him for his goodness and his mercies. Appreciate him, honor him, adore him. Worship him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship, supremacy, dominion, rule, sovereignty. Thank you because you are God. 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 Mashakoko bagata kalakarabadabala.